thank you very much. Mahalo, thank you very, very much indeed. I just said to Jeff, that was a lovely introduction, John. <laughs> just lovely. And, uh, uh, the, okay, <laughs> very good. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play it back for my wife tonight. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I am Dr. Nancy Ellen Carraway, lovely husband. Thank you very much. You now let's get introduced. You know, the, I'm, I'm, I'm her spouse. I say that because my wife, I met my wife uh, at the University of Hawaii when she came back to school. I'm, uh, the University of Hawaii means everything uh, to us. Uh, that, that story that John tells, of course, is familiar. I came here with statehood in 1959. Uh, to go to the University of Hawaii. I, I've never been able to quite figure out why the sociology department decided that I might make a good teaching assistant. Uh, I, I thought maybe just because I was from the East Coast and they were trying to do some transplanting or something into the department. Sound familiar? Uh, and uh, I met my wife who had gone back with the college opportunity program. Dr. Amy Agbiani was was her mentor and guide and and, and, and guru uh, for both of us. She introduced us to one another. I'm very proud of the fact that uh, she got her uh, BA, her MA, uh, an MS in journalism from Columbia and her PhD all after the age of 35, thanks to the University of Hawaii and, and uh, the support and, and nurturing that she got from the university in the political science department there. Um, it's true, I've come through several eras, if you will. I'm only bringing this up because I don't wanna take you down memory lane with me, but I, I feel uh, in as much as this is the uh, last election that I'm going to, to uh, uh, involve myself in personally, I mean in terms of electoral politics, that um, I felt it important to indicate to you why, uh, among other things, I'm here today. Obviously, I would like to have the endorsement of, uh, of UPA, but more than that, more than that, uh, I've come full circle now, today, and over the next 162 days before the ballots go out. Um, I was the member of the collective bargaining team that we put together as a graduate student. UPA didn't exist in those days. This was a, a battle, if you will, for collective bargaining itself, uh, let alone between rivals or among rivals uh, to get a contract. At that point time was the American Federation of Teachers. And I still have my card from October 1970 uh, when uh, I was on the board of the, the, the uh, negotiating team. I should say the team rather than the board. The negotiating team to get the very first contract uh, for faculty. And they fought for having graduate teaching assistants in the union and in collective bargaining because we had contracts in those days for 20 hours. And the collective bargaining law, which some of us had helped to get passed in the legislature, indicated that if you worked 20 hours, you were entitled to, to bargain. Well, the university contended that, uh, yes, the contract said 20 hours, but we really didn't work 20 hours. So therefore, we couldn't be a part of the bargaining unit. And of course, my position was, I'm ready to work 20 hours. You know, if you don't think I work 20 hours, that's your problem, not mine. And you're right, I don't work 20 hours. I work closer to 40 is what I work, at least as a teaching assistants that I knew, and I suspect know now today. Um, did the same. We were professionals, we were dedicated, and we had earned it. That's what this is all about. 
Now, I realize fully that many people in the room may uh, have been here only a few years, some from the uh, 2000, from this century. And what I'm talking about goes back all the way into, into mid-century, in the last century. But the issues are the same. And the opportunities to stand up for the academy, the challenges that face the academy, if anything, remain before us. And that's what I want to concentrate on, is the future of the university. The university is my lifeblood. Everything about me, everything I am, everything I hope to be still in my life revolves around the university. To have the opportunity uh, to be governor at a time when the university is under particular stress, I'm thankful for. I don't mean that in a selfish sense at all. I'm thankful for in the sense that I may be in a position to be able to affect some real changes for the future that bode well, not just for us individually as members of the academy, but for the students and for the intellectual life that to which we all aspire and to which, uh, we, and which we honor and to which we're all dedicated. When I first came that first year, in the fall of 1959, can't recall whether it was that fall or, or in the spring of 1960, um, it was a time when uh, the university uh, was just emerging. Statehood had just come, and uh, we found ourselves in a position that I suspect uh, the University of Miami probably finds itself in as well, possibly uh, in the old days of some of the schools in California. You couldn't possibly take the University of Miami seriously because it was in Florida. And Florida is where people went for vacations. Picture, if you will, the University of Hawaii uh, then back uh, a half century ago. The, whole, the, the way pe that was thought of is the co-eds came in the summer. There were summer school courses, and they came to go to the beach and go surfing and meet beach boys. And, and, uh, and the university was, was seen in that light of exotic romanticism associated with, with the travel and tourism idea of, uh, of Hawaii in that time. And yet here I was in the graduate school um, of the university and sociology, and I was exposed to some of the most stimulating, absolutely fantastic uh, intellectual discourse possible anywhere in the country. I say to you then and I say to you now that the University of Hawaii offers some of the best undergraduate and graduate education in the country. I will stack up my master's degree and my PhD against anybody in this country in terms of the quality and caliber of people that I was exposed to in the university throughout. <laughs> Forgive me and indulge me just a moment, if you will. Anybody who had the opportunity to be in the presence of Rule Denny, the greatest Renaissance scholar of modern times, as I had to have him on my committee. I remember when I first did, when I first put forward my proposal for my master's degree in sociology on the, the religious orientation of University of Hawaii students, using as my template the Lonely Crowd by Glazer and, and Reisman and Denny. And I thought, I'm safe on this one. He's in Chicago. And uh, Reisman was on the coast. And the next thing, well, Rule Denny's coming out to teach. You see, what happened is people wanted to come from all over the world to the University of Hawaii, teach for a semester, teach for a summer, teach for a year, stay. Who knew that Rule Denny would come from Chicago, come to Hawaii, fall in love with Hawaii, and want to stay here? Who knew that Stuart Gary Brown would leave the Maxwell School in Syracuse, come to Hawaii, 
and be in the American Studies Department, fall in love with Hawaii, and, and be a mentor to me, and tell, tell me when I came in for my first PhD course with him, here's 23 books I expect you to, to uh, have absorbed by the time we start class. And, uh, and I was glad to do it. Who, know there, who knew there would be a, a Dr. Floyd Matson, who, who maybe invented the phrase pop culture? Uh, I don't know, but if he didn't invent it, he might as well have. To be exposed to that fecund mind, um, it, uh, it, it, it goes on and on till today. Um, to uh, be able to see the vitality of the, of the French department, for example, with uh, one, of our, one of our newest uh, citizens, uh, Dr. Le, uh, Louis Bousquet, um, who is my wife's teacher now. My wife is back in school immersing herself in, in the French program because of the vitality of the, the language efforts that are out there at, at the university. I'm concentrating a little on Manoa because that's where I got that exposure. Or again, just became a citizen. Or uh, my dear beloved friend and, and uh, mentor to my wife, Dr. Manfred Henningsen, in the, uh, in the political science department who just became a citizen. Uh, a week ago, um, to go to the University of Hawaii at Hilo and to understand that this was a brand new opportunity. Hilo is such a vital place and to know that we were going to have the opportunity to have the astronomy program, the leading astronomy program in the world at Mauna Kea with the 30 meter telescope now. I was proud to be able to be a, a member of the legislature who, and, and the higher ed committee that started the astronomy program here in, in, in Hawaii. And to see it come to fruition today uh, is, is something that I want to be a part of. So I'm here today, I'm lobbying you today. I'm, I want to have the support of the, of the faculty of the University of Hawaii system. I want to uh, have the opportunity to work with you over these next few years to bring the university back into the, the, as the centerpiece of what Hawaii has to offer, not only its own students uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and members of the community, but offer the world. We're in a position to do that. I want to get uh, back to a situation in which the legislature uh, sees the university as an extension of its, of its own best hopes that's the university that I was a part of as a, as a student. That's the university that I was a part of as a member of the legislature when I was first elected in the 1970s. This is my fifth decade of, uh, of electoral uh, activity. Um, and in all of those decades, the university has been at the center of my, of my focus and, and, and support, whether in Congress or in, uh, or, or, or in, or in the legislature or any other venue that I've had the opportunity to serve in. It's something to which uh, I'm dedicated. I do not want to see us uh, continue along a path in which um, uh, the legislature and the executive sees itself as separate from the university. I see the university uh, as an extension of the will of the people of this state uh, to enhance our diversity defining us rather than dividing us. The university is the key to that. It's an economic engine that is unparalleled and I think largely unrecognized by the, by the general public. Um, it is a, a social force for change that uh, still has unlimited opportunity, I think, to meld this incredible melange of people from all over the world starting with the original Polynesian pioneers who came over the sea uh, with faith that somehow they would find paradise, to the person who may be landing at Honolulu International Airport while we're speaking with one another today, with hope in their hearts, probably a lot of fear in their guts, and, and a desire to change their life uh, in a way that they believe will bring opportunity, justice, and, and hope in a way that they have never been able to experience from, wh from whence they came. I think that that, is, that, that hope uh, and that, that spirit of, vent of, uh, of adventure uh, is something that can be manifest fully in the university. The adventure of the mind, 
uh, the possibilities of the intellect uh, to achieve whatever human beings are capable of is something that needs to be nurtured and supported. And I can guarantee you that if I have the, the opportunity uh, to, with your support to be able to continue this work, now that the state has achieved financial stability um, and will have it in the future, uh, that we can now move uh, uh, expeditiously and forthrightly and with vigor uh, to see to it that the university uh, takes its place at, at, at the center of the opportunities that await Hawaii. It's an interesting thing to me that the title of today's meeting, really, the, the, the faculty representative forum is Back to the Future. That, that really struck me because I, I believe we now have a future. We, we've spent the last decade on defense. I think it's time to go on offense for the university, and I'd like to have the opportunity to be with you.